My name is J.D. Epper. Um, I'm our regional manager. We are back at our job site, our day of installation, going over quality control training processes. Um, this is Weston. Um, we're going to be doing a little role playing as he will be the trainee. So now we, we've been to our job site once, we left, hit our other job site. So now we're back for round two at our install. Um, first thing we're going to do again, do another walk around. We're going to walk around that property still just to double check um, all the proper tarps are over, the things that need to be. Um, the crew will most likely be shingling by this point, so compressor protection. Um, it's gonna be a big one. All right, and we're still filling out the same midpoint inspection form we were working on the last time, or is there another form we're doing? No, we will be on that midpoint inspection, which at any point you can just close the midpoint inspection, pull it back up, look at your line items for the photos we're needing, and then go from there. Okay, let's go. So we talked earlier about how you need to go back to the job a couple of times. And I spoke about PWI, um, which of course is paid when incurred. The time to find out paid when incurred is right now. Your QC guy's coming back for his second part of the inspection. And as you can see behind us, the installation is beginning. If there were PWI on this job, this is where they'd be installing it. And it's up to you as the project manager to get up there and get some photographs of it because the insurance company isn't gonna pay PWI if it wasn't WI. PWI is paid when incurred. Um, so you gotta have the photographic evidence, so now's the time. You should know your estimate. If there's PWI, you know about it and you should be keeping close tabs on that to be here now. And quite frankly, they know things like this too. They know when the dry end's happening. So you should be communicating with your QC guy and saying, hey man, there's PWI on this job. If you get back and I'm not there and they're doing install, can you let me know so I can come get pictures? Is there anything we can do for you when we come back to get pictures of PWI? Um, no, I think the biggest thing uh, with PWI is like you said, it's gonna be the ice and water shield um, and not just installing the ice and water shield, but determining how much ice and water needs to be installed. And that's gonna be all determined on um, our soffit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is why the soffit measurement picture we take is so important during the inspection. Right, so, and, and it's also say, you know, even if our work order will state one row of ice and water on the eaves, mm -hmm. but on day of install, either the quality control rep or the sales rep, maybe both of them together, um, take a double look at that soffit and realize this soffit is 24 inches. At that time, we can get a picture of that measurement um, and go ahead and supplement for that just to make sure we install the correct amount of ice and water shield. The very last thing we want to do is put, to, uh, put a roof on a house and not have it to code. Pro tip, <laughs> pro tip. Michael, Michael Ostra. There you go. The roof That's... pop. Pro, 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 pro tip. Okay, so we showed back up, done another walk around of the house. Next thing we're gonna do is hop back on that roof. Um, the crew should be to installing the underlayment at this point with the ice and water um, and the sy synthetic underlayment we use. A um, Couple things we wanna check as the quality control rep is to make sure um, not only that it's watertight, but that it's installed properly. Um, so what that's gonna require is on the eave edge, the underlayment should be over the drip edge. As soon as we get to the rake edges, that underlayment needs to be under the drip edge. Now, what if the, the dry-in material doesn't come quite to the edge of the roof? Is that okay, or does it need to be covering everything? Not okay. That's just something we need to address with the crew and have them correct it okay. um, while we're there. Um, the last thing we want to do, I think it's, it, that's super important because in certain markets, we do dry in the house, um, and leave it for the rest of the day for that city inspection. And if that underlayment would fall short of that eave edge or rake edge, we're not gonna pass the city inspection. Okay. And even if we don't have the city inspections, we know how to install that underlayment. So it's our job to make sure we hold the crew accountable to make sure they're doing the proper layer labor that we're paying them for. Okay. Now you mentioned ice and water. Now on this roof behind us, particularly if today's install, I don't see any ice and water shield. Is that okay? 
What, when do you need ice and water and how do you install it? So ice and water, it depends city by city or county by county. Um, it will always be on your work order that you get at the beginning of the day to point it out. Um, but when the city requires ice and water to be installed, it will be on the eave edges and the valleys. Sometimes you'll see one row of ice and water on the work order. It'll say, you know, eaves one row, valleys one row, or eaves two rows, valleys one row. Um, and how we determine that is the soffit exposure. Um, code states that ice and water shields should be installed 24 inches inside the warm wall. Okay. Um, so as you can see here, usually the sales rep in their pre-inspection will get a good photo of the soffit length just so we know how many rows of ice and water to install. Um, but for whatever reason, um, you know, sometimes we miss things. Um, if you read a work order and it says eaves one row, and you take a double glance at that soffit and realize it's greater than 12 inches, we're gonna need two rows of ice and water, which okay. at that point, um, we'll grab photos of, input those photos into a supplement form, um, and get the material needed for the crew so they can install the roof correctly. Sounds good. Now what else, when we're up there, what else are we looking for as far as the install goes? How do we make sure that these crews are doing a roof to the Bartlett standard? So other than the underlayment being installed correctly on the eaves and the rake edges, um, common problem we run into is how our crews install our drip edge. Um, the Bartlett standard is on the corners, we don't like two pieces of drip edge to be butted up next to each other. Um, we just want one whole piece and we require the crews just to make a small cut in it. Um, and they can bend it and wrap it around that corner. Once we're th to this stage of the installation, the crew will be doing different tasks. You okay. know, on one slope, they might still be installing the underlayment. On the back slope, as you can see here, they're already shingling. So at this point, it's, it's great to not only check the underlayment, but we're gonna be checking out the nail pattern. Um, Bartlett standard is we like a minimum of five nails per shingle, sometimes six, um, and making sure the nails are hitting those nail lines. Um, sometimes they'll shoot them too low, shoot them too high. It's a big problem. Um, it's not up to the manufacturer's warranty, so then we couldn't stand behind the roof at that point. So if I see a crew having a low nail or a high nail, what should I do as a QC rep? As a QC rep, you're gonna wanna point it out to the crew um, and have them pull up those shingles and address that issue with them. Um, because if you just look at it, see them missing the nail line, um, you're fired. 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 <laughs> so as you're going through your midpoint inspection, you'll see a bunch of different line items with their um, required photos. Uh, something we also require is to lines to be chalked on every slope. Um, and this is just to ensure if the crew ever gets off um, when they're shingling, those chalk lines will correct it to have straight rows across the entire roof. Super important thing, um, and we definitely wanna document all those photos. And if you, if you come across a slope and you don't see those chalk lines, same thing, you need, to, you need to be proactive and grab the crew and let them know, hey, we need chalk lines on every slope. Okay. Um, another common thing we, we do for Bartlett Homes is we paint all of our pipe jacks. Um, we paint all of the J vents um, to match the shingle color or the other accessories. Um, a common thing the crews will do is wait till they're already shingled, then go back and paint those. That's not something we want them to do. Um, the only reason for that is because paint will get on the shingles and then it, it's just a very tacky look. You're tacky and I hate you. Okay, you see me after class. Okay, so, so paint, paint the components before the install happens. Right, so where we're at right now, we got the under underlayment laid and tacked down. Um, perfect time for the crew to grab those pipe jacks, grab those bath vents, J vents, whatever they may be in your particular region, um, and paint those on the underlayment. Um, that allows the, uh, gives them a couple hours for them to dry, and then that underlayment's gonna go ahead and get shingled over, so you'll never see any paint. Okay. Now what about, uh, how do we install our valleys? What are we doing with those? Uh, the Bartlett way is we California Valley it. So what that requires is a shingle being ran through the valley 
and then running a bleeder shingle up that valley. Um, so as you can see here, this is how we want our valleys done. Um, on your lower slope, um, this is a slope where they're gonna run those shingles through the valley. Um, after they've run their shingles through this valley all the way to the top, um, you're gonna go ahead, or they're, the installers are gonna go ahead and, and lay that point set bleeder shingle. Um, that's this one right here, and it goes up and down the valley. They'll run a row of shingles all the way to the top and then start shingling on that higher slope um, to continue their rows of shingles all the way up. Okay. What you never want to see is this, this bleeder shingle on the lower slope. Um, again, you're, you're just going to want to think like water. Um, that ridge is higher. When that rain's coming down, everything's going to flow down here. So, so that's why we always want this bleeder shingle on this top slope. Boom. And boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> If we have to install new box vents or if we're installing ridge venting, how do we take care of those components and, and making sure that they're installed to a good standard? Uh, good question. Touch first on the, the ridge vent. Um, the ridge vent, we require the decking to be cut open an inch on each side. So we want a two inch gap in that ridge. Um, and that's just to allow the adequate um, air to escape through that ridge. Um, Different markets do different ways. Um, the Bartlett way is we like the ridge vent to be installed 12 inches from the edge of the roof. Okay. And then what about covering up old box vent holes if we're putting new ridge vent on? So old box vent holes, when we're installing the ridge vent and you have the old box vent holes, we order smart plugs. Um, and we're super easy for the crew, super fast for them to install. If you ever do come across an install where we're installing ridge vent and you don't see these, it's gonna be a material run that we need to go and get that for the crew to cover up those box holes. Okay. Now, if we're installing additional box vents or new box vents that weren't already existing, uh, what do we need to do with that? Um, usually our crews are pretty smart about where to place those vents. Um, it wouldn't hurt as a quality control rep if you see um, previous box vents on one slope across the back side of the home, but you have this big garage or this dormer um, that's missing the box fence, it it's, a, it's a good idea to point the crew in the right direction and tell them where to put these box vents. All right, and how do they create those spaces? Do they use a, a saw or what, how are they, how do I make sure they're doing it properly? And you watch YouTube. <laughs> what you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. May God have mercy on your soul. Uh, watch you. <laughs> so when... <laughs> it's just good with the skills on, not busting it with a hammer. Yeah. Um, when installing new box vents, um, you just want to make sure the crews are using the right tools, which will usually be a skill saw. We usually measure in about four to six feet from that rake edge um, and they go about 10 inches down from their ridge and they'll cut in that box vent with their skill saw. If you ever see a crew using their hatchet to just pound through the, the plywood. Here's Johnny. You need to stop them and, and teach them or inform them of the Bartlett way. Cool. <laughs> That's a terrible high five. <laughs> Another Bartlett pro tip. Pro, 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 pro tip. Sometimes once you got that good rapport with the crew, they will give you a nickname. I suggest you take it and run with it. Okay. Builds a good rapport with the crew. Um, me, I got the John Cena. You can't see me, yeah. but time is now. Uh, um, with with be, this crew. <laughs> I don't know if they'll put any of this in here, but. A couple other common things. Um, as we get into the summer and it gets to that really warm weather, um, super easy to scar shingles. Um, what that means is our crews are just being a little rough or even you walking on it. Um, if you're sliding down the roof in that hot weather with those shingles, it's gonna cause granule loss. Um, during your midpoint inspection, if you see the scarred shingles, we wanna address these right away. Um, super simple just to point it out to the crew and just ask them politely. Stop it. Get some help. Be like, hey, we need to replace these shingles. Um, they'll pull those up. We'll get those replaced. 
What you don't want to do is just look the other way, wait till a final inspection, and then have the crew come back. Yeah, and guys, this is really important, especially on uh, roofs that are getting installed with the lighter colored shingle. You got your Shasta whites, your Sierra grays, anything that is above like a darker brown, uh, it, it's really prominent on those colors to have this scarring issue during install. Um, as, we're, as we're walking towards the roof too, um, it doesn't hurt. Actually, it's in our midpoint inspection. Um, we want a couple photos of inside the dump trailer. Um, two reasons it's important. Sometimes, as we touched before, the PWI items, sometimes carriers will require a photo of that dump trailer just so they can release the funds for that. Um, the other thing you want to check as the quality control rep when you're looking in there is just the waste factor. We want to make sure our crews are being efficient with the material we're buying for them. Um, so that's just going to be looking for full shingles just thrown away in the dumpster. Um, even three quarter ones. I mean, obviously if you see a few of them, we get it, but we just don't want to see um, an abundance of them in the trailer. Sounds good. Bartlett pro tip. Pro, 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 pro tip. You as a quality control rep, not only managing the insulation of it, but you want to make sure our crews are staying compliant. Um, that's going to be looking out for cigarette butts um, on the ground in the homeowner's yard, then physically smoking in front of you or just taking a peek inside their trailer, make sure there's no open beer. Um, cultures are a little different for, for different people. So we just wanna make sure our crews are staying compliant and being as responsible as possible. What about uh, loud music? Loud music is a no-no. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Um, you know, we get it, our crew, sometimes the music motivates them, but we just got to be mindful of the neighbors of our installs that are going on. Um, and we don't want a, any music blaring, causing a disruption to the neighborhood. You're so wise. You're like a miniature Buddha covered in hair. So quality control rep, now that we're up on the roof, um, underlayment this valley underlayment should be laid first you see how it's under the slopes right here in the valley they should always install that underlayment in the valley first then they'll go up each slope placing it and that's you just got to think like water if rain were to hit this right now as long as every row is under the top row water's just going to flow down run right into those gutters no leaks um, as you see on this slope, we got our chalk line, super important. And this is gonna ensure our crews are staying straight with our rows. Um, we got our chalk lines from top to bottom. That is a Bartlett standard that you really wanna stay on top of and make sure and enforce that with our crews. So as we're walking across this slope, you see your chalk lines, you're seeing the underlayment is installed on top of that lower um, roll. Um, another quick thing there's no real rhyme or reason where the cap nails should be placed but just making sure there's an adequate number of the cap nails to ensure if this roof were to get a, an inspection there's strong winds over the night um, we don't want that underlayment blowing up and leaving that decking exposed um, so I usually just walk as you can see on the eave edge the underlayment is over the drip edge which okay. is what code requires um, so everything we see on this roof right here is really good. Um, if you were to see that underlayment under the drip edge, something we want to bring to the crew's attention. Have them change it. Um, and just as you go through your day-to-day -day process, you'll get more comfortable, but never be afraid to be assertive with our crews. Uh, we have sort of a problem here. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. Um, they're, they're skilled laborers, they know what they're doing, but they go so fast sometimes and that's what quality control is here, just to hold them accountable and making sure they install it up to the Bartlett standard. Now that we're on the back side of this, this home, you can see the crew's already shingling. Um, so a very important thing is to make sure they're nailing the shingles correctly. Um, like we said before, we want up to five nail our shingles. 
Um, so not only are we counting, I count, just spot check them. One, two, three, four, five. Good to go. On top of installing those five nails, we want to make sure they're hitting that nail line. Um, as you can see with this, they're right on target and that's what we want. If you would ever see them an inch above that, that nail line an inch below, that's when we have to address it with the crew. We can have them rip up the shingles and just relay them. Okay. Um, as we move over here, I'm just looking down of it, down this, this step of shingles. And as you can see, that last nail is within two inches of the edge, which is a Bartlett standard. Um, you never want to see it three, four inches inside the edge. Bartlett pro tip, pro, 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 pro tip. That last nail needs to be within two inches of that edge, not on the edge, within those two inches. Something Bartlett, it's a Bartlett standard. Um, we paint our pipe jacks. Um, sometimes they will come in black, a lot of times they won't. Um, so we want the crews, as you can see, they painted it before installing it. Um, we never want them to install a galvanized pipe jack on the shingles then paint it after it's already been shingled. All right, now I see on this pipe jack, there's a couple of nails holding it in that are just open and exposed. Is that okay? That is okay at this point. So before the end of the install, or you'll probably catch it during the final, um, those exposed nail heads will be cocked. Okay. And then I see also, you mentioned before about the chalk lines, and I see three chalk lines that they've hit perfectly with each of their the rows that correspond with that. Is that, that's what you're looking for on every install, correct? Correct. If you would ever see it, you know, come in an inch or two below, even a, even a half inch or an eighth of an inch. Um, you see how many rows of shingles are on this house? If you're an eighth of an inch off, every eight rows, it's gonna be an inch. So by the time they get to the top, that, that roof is looking like it just went through the ocean. <laughs> so just a, a wrap up of your whole day. Um, you as a quality control rep, we just really want you to take pride in what you're doing. Um, we're here to, to proactively install roofs up to code and problem solve and minimize um, just just to make the process easiest for the homeowner as it can be. We get it, like installing roofs, tearing them off is messy. Um, it, it, and it's a hard job, but anything you can do to help steer the crew in the right direction, make sure um, our customers are satisfied and they're at ease with the product we're giving them um, is super important. You know, you just wanna make sure that you're doing everything in your power to fulfill your job title. You are a quality control representative. You are here to ensure install quality, ensure um, experience quality as well. That goes for not just installing the roof properly, but everything around that roof, everything that's in that homeowner's property. Uh, you know, you're making sure that we're not busting up neighbors' houses, all that kind of stuff. You just want to make sure that you're maintaining good relationships with the crews, but also in the end, providing a customer with something better than what they started with and making sure that they're gonna go, you know, tell all their friends about us and get us even more business, I don't know. Yeah, I just say, just, just be confident in yourself and be assertive with these crews. I think that's good. <laughs> Nip the tip. So a common issue will be the corners when it's so good I lost. <laughs> Just give me, give me 10 seconds. You wanna? <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible high five.